We're in Windows Server 2012 R2, and let's upgrade to Server 2016. So we have our DVD in the tray. I'll double click on that, and now we will double click on setup.exe. And I don't have any third party programs installed, but I do have Hyper V installed on here. So we will see if Hyper V will still work after the upgrade. It should work, but there's always a the possibility we may need to reinstall. So should we get the important updates? Always a good idea. Let's go ahead and click Next. And if this takes a little bit too long, we can always back out and launch again without doing the updates. We're now prompted to put in the key, which I'll do, and then we'll click Next. Now we're prompted for either 2016 Standard or 2016 Desktop Experience. This is different from the 2012 installation where it says with a GUI or without a GUI. In this case, we want to use the GUI, which is the desktop experience. So go ahead and click Next. Otherwise, you will not get a desktop. Everything will be command line. Go ahead and choose Accept after you read through the licensing terms. Now, it's giving us an option here to keep the personal files and apps or nothing. We're going to choose to keep them and click Next. However, it is possible that some third-party applications may not work right and may have to be reinstalled, so make sure you have the software anyway. Also, make sure you have a good backup because you never know what could be destroyed during the installation and upgrade. Now it's running through the updates, and again, if you change your mind on this, you can open it again without checking for updates, and you can just run Windows updates afterwards. However, if there's some sort of bug that is fixed in the updates during the upgrade, then it's a good idea to do those now rather than later. And now the updates are done, and it's moving on to the next step. If we get any kinds of errors, we'll need to fix those. Otherwise, it will go on to running the installation. And now we get a warning saying that the upgrade is not recommended. And if you must upgrade before continuing, make sure your app vendors support the applications. Well, at this point, we don't have any third party applications. So let's go ahead and click Confirm. And now it's going to check on the space, make sure we have enough. Now it says we are ready to install. It's going to be the 2016 standard desktop experience, which basically means that it will have the GUI that you're used to here that we see in 2012 R2, and it's also going to keep our personal files and apps. If you want to, you can click on change what you want to keep, but we're going to go ahead and stay with the keeping the personal files and apps. And now we see we are installing, and the PC might restart several times. Go ahead and just let it continue until finally the Windows Server 2016 desktop appears. And as far as how long it takes, it could be anywhere from 30 minutes to several hours. It just depends on your server. My server is a dual Xeon, let's see, Xeon processor with four cores in each processor as well as 76 gigs of RAM. So it's a pretty beefy server, so it shouldn't take more than about 30 minutes total. During the installation, we may get cut off of the screen because this is a remote desktop session. It's the only way we could record it using our recording computer. But there's nothing really to be concerned about from this point on until the installation is up, unless it gets stuck. And then there's different videos on what you need to do if that happens. It's been just a few minutes, and we see we're up to 22%, so things are going well. We are 10 minutes in, and we are at 47%. And we're now logging in for the first time in Windows Server 2016. Looks like the upgrade was successful. The upgrade in total took about 45 minutes, a little bit longer than I thought it was going to do. And the first time we log in, we're going to see some PowerShell activity. And that all is stuff that's going on in the background. And we now see a blank screen, but we're starting to get our start menu. And there is our desktop. Server manager is loading up for the first time. And there's our server manager dashboard. As 
So you can see in our taskbar at the bottom, the colors have changed a little bit from 2012. So I click on Hyper-V Manager, which is now a little bit darker green. And it shows our various different virtual machines. Now before it just said off, and now it says off critical. Let's go ahead and try to start one of these that say off critical, make sure that they still work OK. And we do get an error. So it looks like Hyper-V did not upgrade as we had hoped. So I'll have to look and see what that problem is. We'll go ahead and close it for now. Let's see if one of the ones that just say off will start. And this also gives an error. And it looks like the problem in this case is that our iSCSI did not reconnect automatically. So let's go into Server Manager and open up the iSCSI initiator. It says it is connected. And the volumes and devices are there. Let's go to Computer Management. <coughs> go ahead and open up Storage, Disk Management. Again, colors look a little bit different, but everything else looks pretty much the same. And it's showing our disk is offline. And in this case, it says that it's being managed by the clustering, the failover clustering component. So we'll have to fix that as well. All right, let's see what else is different about this. We click on Add Roles and Features. And we see mostly the same options. Let's click on the Start button and see how that's changed. And we can see that we no longer have the giant window we used to have with the tablet-looking version. We have our Start menu here, and we can add to the uh, start area if we want to. So that's upgrading Windows Server 2012 R2 to Windows Server 2016.